Hi there. I'm going to be a little bit vulnerable right now and share something with you. Here's my GitHub contributions for 2021, which is not that much. Here's what it looked like in 2022. We got a little bit more contributions and more action towards the end of the year. And here's what I contributed this year, which is a lot more progress. Can you guess what happened? I'll give you a second to think. Okay, the second's over. I discovered Next.js the end of December 2022. Yes, I was late to the game, but hey, better late than never. Hi, my name is Hosna. I've been a software developer for a few years now, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how I've been able to build projects 10 times faster using Next.js. So let's get to it. When building projects before, I wasn't using a framework. I was doing everything manually. I was using Create React App, so I created my own client folder and within there I would set up everything such as the components, the assets, the actions and the APIs that would be communicating with the server. And then I have to also go set up the server. And then within the server, I had my config files, I had my SQL tables, I had my handlers and whatnot. And this was just very time consuming to set everything up. I don't want to think about, I just wanted to think about building the project. Now that you've seen a little bit of how I built projects before, here are three main areas that have saved me a lot of time when switching to the Next.js framework. They are file-based routing, route handlers, and data fetching. So let's start with file-based routing. It is where you define all your routes by adding, removing, renaming files within a directory. And here's an example of how to do that in Next.js. So here's one of my projects using Next.js. As you can see, I have one folder now. The structure is a lot more cleaner and easier to navigate. On my right, you can see I have my web app open. Now I'm using Next.js with the app directory. So in order to show you how file-based routing works, we have to go open up our app directory. And you can see we have a bunch of folders and each one of these folders, except the API folder, which is for APIs, which we'll get to in a second. Each one of these folders represents a route. For instance, if I want to see what is in the search route, I can go ahead and click the search button and it will redirect me to our search route. So this page right here is this section right here. Now, if I want to implement something like a nested route, then what I could go ahead and do is within our search folder, create another folder like other search or something like that. And then within that, I have to make sure I have a page and then that will be our nested route. So now I just created a folder within the search folder, added our page. Then if I go inside a route and just add other search to the end of it, then we should be redirected to a page with other page inside of it because that's what we created right here. Now the reason why it's showing a nav and a footer is because it's within our root layout. So within Next.js, you have pages, you have layouts, and you have other formats that you could add. We could also go ahead and take a look at dynamic routes. For instance, let's go to the search. I have a bunch of teams. I have a folder just for team. And within that folder, I have a slug that I'm passing in, which is a team ID. I want to make sure that when I click on a specific team, I want it to route to that team page and pass in the ID. So then it know it's a team. If I go ahead and click on this, now you could see our route has changed to our team and our team ID. So that's how that's being done. Show you how this works. I'm going to go and inside our search and then within here let's look for the team you can see we have teams here and then within teams i have this link which represents this card right here that we were just showing previously and you can see that we're passing in through our link our route that we wanted to go to you can see we have the team and then we have the team id that's being passed in through here so that's how that's being done for dynamic routing so we could get this and those are the main things that i've been using file-based routing for with next.js now I'm going to talk about route handlers. So route handlers, you are able to create custom requests for a given route using the web request and response APIs. So I just opened another project that I've been working on and I want to show you how I use the route handlers for this one. The web app is called SiteMuse. It's a place where you can input a URL link and then it gives you a screenshot for both the desktop and the mobile version of that website. I'm using two APIs for that. It's one API to take the screenshot and another API to upload it to a store storage base. And how I'm doing that is within our source folder, I have the app directory inside the app directory. I have the API folder, and then that's where I have my route. The route is inside the link and the create folder. So let's open that route up and let me show you what's happening. So as you can see, I have a post function and it's expecting a request as a parameter. 
I'm getting the information that was passed through the body and then checking if it meets certain conditions. If it does, I want it to perform a specific action. And then in the end, I'm getting the data that I received and then adding it into my database using Prisma. This specific link route is used inside the modal that's created here. So as you can see, I have this add link modal that pops up. If I go ahead and go to our create link modal, you can see that I am referencing that API right here. So I'm getting the values from above and then using my API route to then pass my values into it. So then let me show you how it works. If I get a URL, so here's roomgpt.io. If I paste in the URL link, so then we are going to get a screenshot of the desktop version of roomgpt. So just give it a second. And then once it's done, you can see it shows up here. If I go inside, this is a screenshot of Room GPT, what we just inputted in our URL. So that's how I'm using route handlers for this specific project. And then last but not least, data fetching. There are four ways that you can fetch data using Next.js. Number one is on the server with fetch. Number two is on the server with third-party libraries. Number three, on the client VA route handler and number four on the client with third-party libraries. The demo that I'm gonna be giving right now is using the first method. So here's another project that I was working on. It was an X clone. And what I'm going to show you is how to fill this with dummy data. So as you can see, I don't have any posts right now. There's a great website called JSON placeholder where you get free fake API for testing and prototyping. So we are going to get one of the APIs and there's one for posts and one for users. So we are going to fetch both of them and then we're going to display whatever users have posted. So if we go back here and if I go back inside our code, the first thing I'm going to add is our post component that I created and uh, which we are going to pass our variables of the name, the username and the post body. Next thing we're going to do is make sure that we have a dynamic since we are using multiple fetch requests. That's what we're going to have to include. The next thing we're going to do is create our function for, to get our users. And then uh, inside that function, we are going to add this. We are going to fetch our data since we are in the server component. We are able to do that since it's an async function and then our component is also async so we are going to fetch our users and then we're going to return the response and then after that we also want to get our post so let's create a function for that and then within it we are doing the same thing but we're going to get it for post this time and then the next thing we are going to need to do is call our function so here is our function we're going to use an await wait until it's done finishing fetching and then we are also going to get it for our posts as well so we have our users and our posts. So we want to combine that data and then call it combine data. So we're going to map through the posts and the users and for any user ID that is equal to the post of user ID, any post that is associated with a specific user, then we're going to return both the post and the user. And then we're going to use that data to then map through it and then input our data within our post function. So now you can see the data has shown up on the right side with the user and the specific data within it. You can see we have different users. So this is a great way for testing with dummy data. And that's how you get data on the server using fetch. And those are a few reasons why I've been able to build 10 times faster using Next.js. Those are a little bit more technical, but I like to give a few honorable mentions that helped me along the way. And they are the Next.js documentation, stellar, beautiful, great, the increase of Next.js content on YouTube. And of course, how can I not forget ChatGPT, Stack Overflow, and GitHub issues? They helped me with so much. And yeah, that's it for me. I hope you got something out of it. And thanks for watching.